Hi everyone, this is Kathy Mason from Mason Works Marketing and I'm here today with Kate, well I'm going to call her Kate, but it's Catherine Blake Thomason, who I know is Kate, who I've known I guess maybe five to eight years, I'm not quite sure how long, um, because we both took this wonderful uh, personal development course called Avatar, and we both went all the way through the wizards part, which is the magic part. And um, but Kate now has created a process. Um, we call her the Joy Architect because she's created a process that uses the elements that helps you connect with your joy that is so far uh, superior to anything that's out there. It's a permanent new relationship with yourself and a connection to the earth and the elements. So Kate, good morning. How are you? Good morning. I'm great. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> so, so Kate, I'm so glad to introduce you to everyone here. And I'm so excited for you to tell us um, about how you are the, the joy architect. But first, I wanted to ask is, why do you feel that joy is so important to our development? Joy, in my definition of joy, which is an authentic joy, a, a joy that you hold with you inside and connect outside, that joy is a foundation. It is when you find that inner joy, it becomes the foundation that you can build the rest of your life on. It's the comparison of having a house uh, that has a strong foundation. It, it's, it can uh, be your life's uh, expression. It gives the energy for your life to build for you in each of your relationships, your relationships with your, uh, with your loved ones, with money, with your career, with the rest of, with the rest of life. So Ma Manny, Dr. Manny saying hi to happy Friday. Hi, Manny. <laughs> well, Kate, you are the epitome of joy. I mean, I've known you for a while and you went through a process to, of growth just like I did. But you have this sparkly, incredible energy that's contagious. It's almost like a, a kid who wants to play. And but but you're but you're grounded. It's not like you're out of your body and you can't do serious work. You are you are just um, it's this sparkly energy that I want more of. So uh, could you tell us a little bit about um, how you've helped clients go from where they're they're not connected to their higher knowing and their own their own happiness? and you took them from there to, to joy? Because I know you do this all the time now. Yeah, yeah, let me first explain. When I say the foundation of joy, I'm talking about your soul essence. This is your personal divinity. And the best way I have to explain it is that, uh, you know, if we look at the example in the natural world, we have uh, essential oils. This is something most people are, are familiar with. Each oil has its own essence. It has a purpose, a way of exuding its own, uh, its own self, you might say, in order to, um, to serve the rest of life. Let's say, for example, lavender, right? Uh, a, a number of people are now using these to sort of help them with their own feelings of peace, right, for lavender. Right. Um, but if you were to ask lavender, lavender, instead of helping people with peace uh why don't you help people laugh or why don't you help people to create more of a sense of uh of energetic thriving in the world it wouldn't be happy <laughs> it's so it's that finding the you that you can relate to the rest of life with that makes you shine that makes you enjoy life it's the impulse underneath the things we do. It's not the doing, it's the impulse underneath what we do. Uh, the and being. So, so what I found is that a number of people that I've worked with, while they have maybe had a number of different trainings in uh, techniques or various other things, 
about uh, their spirituality. They've had some growth to understand what is this that's in here. Until they can identify that unique source of giving that they can give to the rest of life joyfully, then they can't really gain the energy from it. Right. So, so let's say people um, that I've worked with who are like, well, I don't really, I, I know that I like doing certain things, but what they have been told in life is, well, but there was one woman who, who said, well, I, I, I need to connect with everyone, give, put all my love out in the world, right? But what it did was exhaust her until she understood that when she was in this place of her being, that is what gives. So, um, so just to clarify, it is a, it's like the fish in the water that doesn't, isn't aware of the, the value of the water until the fish is taken out. It's like that for you. You are not aware of the value you have in the world until you can see yourself as a unique expression of the divine. And when you see this uniqueness, then you can see that's really special. You can see that is how I love to love. That's how I love to engage in play in the rest of the world uh, with maybe my, uh, my dream partner or my, uh, my career or, or whatever it is that you may choose to have a relationship with in life at any moment. That is the way you like to express yourself. And so when you see it, you're anchored in it. You can say that is special and you lose the self-judgment. You lose the, uh, you know that it's precious to someone. You can see it. And from there, you can create meaningful relationships because you know you're giving a gift of that gift of divinity that you own to someone else. Wonderful. So, uh, so I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So, so when you talk about spiritual development or connection to your soul essence, how does um, spiritual development compare to personal development? This is where, a, where does joy fit with all of that? Yeah, this is a really good question because you know I know someone who has had. Uh, a lot of personal development. Let's say, for example, they've gone to get a number of degrees. They have uh, in the field of interest that they have, um, and and she has just a, a plethora of knowledge in in her field. But what happens is she goes to work every day, and is enjoying the work. But she finds at the end of the day she's so depleted. It's like she's got nothing left. For herself and when you include the spiritual development this understanding of who you are at your core the identity you are at your core then it is a relationship that gives to you as you give it's it's a joy in um in the moment of that energetic uh um synergy between you and and the greater divine uh, and and that is what is then given so it's sort of like a self-sustaining um, expression of yourself so you can go into your field of interest and you can not only use the knowledge that you might have in your own personal development um, but you can really gain even more than what was written in a book before. You can gain new knowledge in the moment. Something, new insights come to you when you're in this space that maybe haven't brought, been brought to light in your field before. So it's a grander expression. It's a deeper expression and it creates more uh, connection with the people that, that you're with. They, they might look at you and say, hey, there's genius in there. Right. <laughs> Whereas if you are just focused on personal development, um, you may feel more comfortable with your knowledge. But uh, but there isn't that spark of creative 
genius. Right. Well, it's depleting. You said it. It's depleting versus energizing. Exactly. You're not in the flow. You're in your head, not in your heart. So it's it's got a whole different um, lifespan, not as long. <laughs> yeah, your health tends to suffer. Yes. It isn't the spiritual peace. If there isn't that connection. Yeah. So, so Kate, I know that you're an amazing channel. Um, and I've witnessed just wonderful experiences with you where I've seen you be able to read a situation or you've actually um, gave so much insight that it shifted people really quickly from what they were doing. So when you help people discover their path to joy as a joy architect do you use channeling in your process yeah i do i move into my own connection with what you might say the light or the divine and from there i connect with you and and we sort of together are in a in an experience and so you feel that sense of being held by the oneness of life, you might say. And with what happens in uh, the work, it feels very natural. I, I think that's where the elements come in because I'm very grounded in what would uh, maybe be called nature's intelligence. I'm grounded there, I'm grounded in my body, grounded in my being. And so when I connect you with that, I give you that opportunity to take away all of the world's identifications of you, mm -hmm. move out of the ego, if you will, and to just really enjoy the self that is there, enjoy that essence that is your own. And so I connect through this uh, channeling experience to an experience of the raw you, the authentic you. And that becomes a very playful experience because people are like, ah, oh, now that's now that's refreshing. That's me. You know, that's the me without anybody else's definition. Right. It's my definition of uh, the me I want to be. The and soul expression, right? I mean, it's really and your and your divine purpose can come through because you're not blocking it with all the constructs. Exactly. You get to see the light without uh, all of the coverings, without right. all of the filters, and then from there. All of the things that you had hung your world identity on can be let go of. And you can start to really build your life on that pure identity that you enjoy being. You yeah. enjoy, uh, you know, bringing into the, the world. You, you Well, what's amazing is that it takes a very little bit of time with you to have these results. I mean, when we talk about personal development courses and they give you tools that you can take out of your little toolkit, which is a good stepping stone. I, I'm not, I'm not saying it's, I'm not disparaging those processes because I found them useful. But this is a whole nother level where you reconnect to your soul essence and get to dance with it rather than um, put it in a box. Oh, I'll play with it on Saturday. <laughs> 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 you know, oh, let's see what I could do on my days off. Instead, this is this is how you the the uh, your intuition comes in and your work comes into flow. It's it's a whole different state of being. And and what I want everyone to know is that it this isn't a temporary um, change. Once you've seen, it's like someone opened up the curtains and let you see that you are joy and that you should be happy and that you have a choice, um, you start looking from a much higher perspective on everything. Do yeah. you agree? Absolutely. It's like once you've seen something, you can't unsee it. <laughs> <laughs> right? It's like you know because you can feel you are in the experience and you say, yes, that is me. That is me. And, and you can't deny it after that because it feels like you. <laughs> and, and not just you, like, um, you know, some people can say, well, 
you know, I felt this, uh, this light or something. It is a, a unique view uh, that is sort of the personal divinity. It isn't limited in any way. It's not limited by your body or your auric field or any of the things that you might have, your conscious. It is infinite. However, it is still unique. Like, for example, uh, yesterday I was working with someone who had just a beautiful gift. Um, and, and in this session, she, we popped into a moment where she was using it in her mother's womb. Oh. It was like, this is before the world happens, right? In this moment, she was synthesizing, harmonizing uh, the energies that were coming in from the conversation. And is wow. she's a, she is a sound healer and uh, just a beautiful being, but she this is her joy. She loves this, right? So this isn't like, um, this is this is happening at a divine energetic level. I mean, it's it's not like, um, you know, she was in her mother's womb with a xylophone. Um, <laughs> you know, how uncomfortable! You know, it's not doing. It is being. It is it's being. Ah, uh, yeah. She's feeling her essence, feeling the life around her, and communicating in that way. And so, you know. I, other beings that I have had the delight to connect with have their own essence. It's just like a special, unique way of touching the rest of the world, a gift. And then what they can do from, from having an awareness of this gift is then they can take this awareness and flow it into the relationships that they want to have in the world. Like, for example, uh, you may say you want a divine partner who would like to create with you in this in a synchronistic way like for example you might say well if there's somebody who loves to just flow energy right there might be something synchronistic to that flowing energy like for example downloading wisdom or something that something that has a sort of uh, two sides of the coin uh, that together you can create bigger. Um, so you may decide that you you are, um, when you look at your divine partner, you, when you look at your partner, is if it isn't going well, you can say, well, is that essence there interested in creating uh, their joyful world in, in a synchronistic way or not? Right. You know? Right. Well, um, the other thing I wanted to let everyone know about is that I think since 2012, we haven't had to have white light experiences or near death experiences in order to touch our core essence. I think if you talk to anyone who has had a near death experience, they'll tell you they touched God and they felt and saw how important their essence was in the play that yeah. we here you know, on earth. And what's beautiful is that you don't have to have those dramatic changes anymore in order to touch who you really are. And Kate has a method that will help you do that without, it's, there's no more suffering to it. There's only the realizations and then it's almost like you with this new perspective, you autocorrect. <laughs> it's, yeah. It's, yeah, yeah, it's just like, oh, okay, that was the wrong perspective. I'll take this one. And then it's and then your life is totally different without without the trauma. It's very quick and um and fairly easy. I mean, I, I haven't seen that it's hard in any way, except that um, you know, you don't you don't go through the um, incrimination that you do with a lot of the other processes. It's not like, oh, why do I do that to myself? That's that's what, uh, you know, if you created your stuff, you created your stuff. And that's a terrible realization that you don't go there, do you, Kate? You go straight to divine well, essence, you know, right? You chip away. It, you know, a lot of people look at... Um, 
what I call the dream machine, which is the body and the consciousness working together as, um, you know, they, they see it as, well, you have to just uh, take this like a computer. You're, you know, the body is the hardware, the, the consciousness, the consciousness, the software, and you have to just uh, uninstall uh, all oh. these programs in order to get at that chorus. You have to chip, 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 chip. But this is different. What you do is you, because we together are in the field of the one, you sort of like, you walk out of the world door and you walk into the divine world and you're like, oh yeah, we have a home again. Okay, good. We're, um, you know, we're able to just look at the, the, the soul essence. And from there you hang your hat, the rest of your life gets hung on that. In the world of psychology, they say that we create our world based on who we define ourselves to be. This is creating a new definition. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah, because you can see, aha, uh-huh, this is me really. This is me really. And really? so when you say, okay, this is the me that I t- I enjoy taking to the world. This is the me I love being in the world, not doing, being. This is who I I feel I'm comfortable in my own skin with. This Perfect. me, the me me. <laughs> Then the authentic, the authentic you without all the constructs that you put in place to try to get love. Right. <laughs> That's and what all of that. You look back at all that you created that, that, you know, created this other identity or other number of identities, whoever, you know, knows how many identities we create in the world, uh, you know, mom identity, whatever. Um, then, you know, ah, oh, that's, why I I created the things I did because I was trying to get to this. I was trying to come back to this me and I I made a few misunderstandings along the way. So you can really forgive yourself for uh, creating things other than what you might have preferred. What, what I find though, Kate, is that you don't even go there. You don't go to, that. that's why I was comparing it. You don't go to um the uh self-incrimination part at all you're so busy reconnecting and joy that that stuff isn't it it doesn't even it's like someone could push the button again that yeah. that caused that natural and it's gone yeah that reaction doesn't even show up again yeah no because you you let it all go because it's a little bit like you know having the understanding of what the original a uh, computer program was before you started meddling all around with it, right? And and you're like, oh, that was that was the pure intention that I had coming into this world, right? Yeah. That was what it was. You, you delete all that stuff and then defrag. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. You let it go, and you know there there's it, it's a rather quick process because you start falling in love with yourself. It's it's not an, an arrogance or it's a reverence for, for yourself. Uh, you're like, wow, that is something special I have. This is a special value I, I, I can give. And so it's um, it, 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 when you add that, re- that reflective love, the love that says, yes, that's all, it burns away at all of the self-judgment that you have dumped upon yourself for not having achieved the things that you may have wanted to achieve somehow, some way. So that then you can put that forward and create what, what it was you came for. Perfect. How perfect. Well, um, we're almost out of time, Kate. Um, could you explain how pe- people can work with you so that they if they find this conversation enticing or if they sense you are their teacher, their guide, um, how they could find you? Uh, well, certainly you can come to my website, which is uh, my name. I think uh, that's something we can, uh, we have on the screen. Is, is it, yeah. So uh, katherineblakethomason.com. And feel free. There's some uh, free video, uh, sorry, audios that are there for you to connect with me further if you want to give that a try you can download those um and then of course connect with me through uh you know send me send me the heads up that you want to have a conversation 
and and we'll play. <laughs> yes. Um, um, so Kate has a Facebook. Uh, author's page because she's working on her book. So she has a Facebook author's page. She has a website. I'll put those all in the comments so that you can experience her and you can always private message her on Facebook. Um, but um, I encourage you to find out more and we will be doing a few more of these interviews. So um, it'll give you a chance to sense it out if this is really for you, but I highly recommend this work and it's time. It's time for all of us to, to uh, do our soul mission and reconnect to the joy that we are and share it. It's this, uh, it's time. That's all I can say. It's time to enjoy and play. And, yes. and when we play the way we want to play, we play together well. And yes. Yeah, we cooperate because there's no competition. Everyone has something special. Right, so, right. The joy to connect. So. Yes. Okay, well, great, Kate. Thank you so much. This was such a uh, pleasant conversation. And I, I just appreciate your work so much and can't wait to see how, um, how well this is um, integrated into other people's lives. I think it, you're such a gift. Your work is such a gift. So I just wanted to feature you and let my people know because you guys, this is really amazing. So <laughs> anyway, okay, well, we better go now. Talk to you later, Kate. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you.